gotta do your homework. If you don't do don't do your exams, you won't pass. All right. You're right, welcome. Okay. Gotta turn in the exams. We got four out of thirteen. Do I need to bring beer? <laughs> All right, let's uh let's get started then. So here's the exam from last time. Simply graphing again. Okay. So let's work this uh let me see, let's insert new page. Move number two down here. All right, so we need to graph these first as if they were lines. So let's get the y by itself, put it in the slope intercept form. So if I subtract two X from both sides, I get that. If I divide everything by three, I have this. So let's graph that dude. Uh, let's see, try to do something reasonable here. Our, our Y intercept is at one third. So if we make each tick mark worth a third, that means that's a point on our line. We'll make this blue. And then our slope is negative two thirds. So for every two I go down, I have to go to the right three. And let's see, since every each one of these tick marks is worth a third, two would be way down here. So I'm gonna, I'm going to rewrite something here. I'm going to say, okay, well, negative two thirds. If I divide the top and the bottom by three, that's negative two thirds over one. So if I go down two thirds, I have to go to the right one. That's the same as going down two into the right three. It'll be on the same line. Okay. So if I go down one, two thirds, go to the right one i'll be here so on this axis the x-axis each tick mark is worth one but on the vertical axis each tick mark is worth a third yeah go down one two thirds go to the right one or i can say uh, go up two thirds and go to the left one and let's see if we go there's our line, but we want all the y values less than that. So we're talking about that size. So far, so good. All right, let's look at the next one here. Let's get our y by itself. Subtract x from both sides. Now divide by a minus two. And when I divide by the minus sign, the sign here gets switched. So I end up with uh, X divided by two, that's one half X, right? A minus and a minus make a plus. And then four divided by minus two, minus two, so that's green. So let's see our, uh, y intercept is at minus two, so it looks like I'm going to have to move this guy here up. Because each tick mark is worth a third on our y axis here, so I'll have to fix that. That's easy to use. There we go. So one, two, three. One, two, three. So down here is at minus two. Now, my slope is a positive one half. So for every one I go up, so up one, I have to go to the right two. Up one, the right two. So that's our line, but we want all the y's less than that. That's down here. The only place that's both is right there. Is that what y'all got? Yeah, let's check my solutions and see if I did it right last time. Yeah. 
Because they did something wrong here, it does not look the same. Oh, I see what I did. We need all the y's bigger than. So for the green one, we need everything up there, right? The y's bigger than that, right? This is where they're equal. We need the bigger than. So this is where they overlap. That's our overlap. Welcome. And I think that's what I got last time. Yeah. So let's look at number two. All right, same trick. We need to get these in slope intercept form. If I subtract X from both sides, I have that. Which is, if I sound stuffed up, I've got a cold for my daughter. Those kids at the playground, man, they are snotty. Every little kid, man, just snot all over them. So gross. <laughs> it's like you have those little wipes for baby. It's like, no, I'm going to bring those, uh, the ones for cleaning the kitchen counters, you know, <laughs> the industrial grade ones. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Our y intercept is at one. So, boom. And our slope here is minus one, which can be written as minus one over one or one over minus one, right? Basically, a slope of minus one, you know, we don't even write it there, right? There's really a one there. We don't bother writing that, All right? A slope of minus one looks like this. For every one I go down, I go to the right one. So it's a perfect diagonal line, right? Down one, right one, down one, right one. There's this dude, and we want all the y values less than. That means we're downward, okay? So that's, that's that area. And now for the next line, let's get it in our right form. If I move the x over, now I'll multiply everything by a minus, which is gonna flip this dude. Oop. So for this guy, our y-intercept is at minus two, so I go down two. And the slope here is a positive one. So for every one I go up, I go to the right one. One right one, I'll sign that one, right? A positive one for slope is just the diagonal going upward. A negative one for slope is just the diagonal going downward. And we want the y values less than that, so down there. And the place where they overlap is in there. Hey, man. There we go. Let's check my solutions to see if I got that one. Okay. No, I did something wrong on my solutions. Let's check here. Um, I moved the x over. I got that. So for the first one, let's see. Yeah, that's the same. Now, what did I do wrong here? I flipped the sign, negative x minus 2. Yeah, upper, lower. Did I do something wrong here? Uh, uh huh. Right here, this. I did that on the last one. Y needs to be bigger than that. So we want the stuff above that line. Oh, I keep doing that. So the place they overlap is over here. There you go. Does that make sense? I screwed up both problems. <laughs> right? We drew for the blue, we drew our blue line right here. And then we wanted everything above the blue line. So that was up here. And then for the green one, we drew our green line right here. And we wanted everything below that green line that's down here. And the place where they overlap is in the red. That make sense? If you have questions, stop me. All right.
I'll do it wrong for you again. <laughs> no. Oh, we do did have the attendance, here, don't we? Uh, let's see. We're green today. Okay, so that's the exam. Here's the quiz for today. I'm only going to do one problem because it's the linear programming stuff. All right. Remember how you do this. We we, we find our little region here. All right. So these we use these to find our region. All right. And then this is going to give us a line. Uh, this is difficult stuff here. So the the inequalities will give us a region, and then this guy is different. It's going to give us a, a line. Okay. This guy here we will write as y equals my, uh, negative 3x plus z. All right. So what's the z doing here? Well, you plug in different values for z and you get different lines, right? Like if you're going to graph this guy, this is your y-intercept, right? Whatever z is. And then you have a slope of minus 3, so it would look something like that. Okay? But as you change z, this line just goes up or down. Thank you. Whereas this gives you your uh, uh, some kind of region. Say it looks like this. Do, do, do. Okay? So this will give you some kind of region. This is just a line, but if you change the the value for z, right, that's just where it intersects over here. It has, the slope doesn't change, so that makes this line either go up or down depending on what you plug in for z. When you move it down here, it should touch your uh, the region bounded by this, and that's going to give you your uh, maximum or minimum. Okay, so that's what they're looking for is maximize and minimize. Basically, we know, I don't know how useful this line actually is. It's just, we know that whenever you make a boundary like that, the corner points always give you the maximum and the minimum. Okay. So we're looking to maximize Z. Z is what we want to maximize. So one way to do this is just find your, uh, your boundary, your like area there. Look at the corner points. You know they'll have an x and a y, and then plug those into this equation, right? Because this is what you're trying to maximize, and figure out which one of those corner points gives you maximums or minimums. All the corner points will be a maximum or a minimum of some kind. So that's the goal there. So we'll take ten minutes. And this is tough. Uh, I, I recommend like using some software to graph these would be a lot easier. We will attempt to graph it by hand. All right. Um, but um, that's kind of what we're going to try to do. Uh, we can use algebra to see where, you know, if we have some kind of region, because one of these will be a line, well, another one will be a line. The corner points is going to be where these lines intersect. So we're going to spend the rest of the day working on these, but I want you to spend some time working on your own, try to get your mind wrapped around it, okay? So it's 316, uh, 326, we will work this together, but again, do your best, uh, see how far you can get on it, okay? And if you need help, this is one of the examples in the book, it's like example two or something, 5.3 is where we're at. All right, class, let's work on this quiz together. Um, so this right here is what's going to give us a, a boundary. And of course, this. This is just saying x and y have to be positive. All that means, if x is positive, we're over here. y is positive, we're up here. So all they're saying is we're in quadrant one. That's what we're concerned with, which makes sense. Uh, in business, right? We're not interested in like negative quantities, 
right? You don't make a negative number of skateboards or something like that, right? So here we go, quadrant one. Um, let's look at this, this first guy here. Um, if we move our 2x over, we have negative 2x plus 20, all right? And these numbers look pretty big. So, I mean, we don't have 20 tick marks this way. So we could make each tick mark worth, um, I don't know, like three or something like that. Three, four, we'll make it worth four because four will at least divide into 20, right? So there's four, eight, 12, 16, 20. So for the first one, we'll start off right there. Then we have a slope of negative two, okay? So for every two we go down, we have to go to the right one, right? That's the same as going down four and going to the right two. Down four to the right two. So what we have here vertically, we're using four for each tick mark and horizontally we're using one for each tick mark. Hopefully that'll give us something reasonable. Um, let's see. So, so far we have this guy and we want Y values to be less than that. So we're looking at this side of that. That line. Okay, so we'll just keep that in mind instead of scribbling all over it, right? All right, let's try the next one here. Um, let's see, if we move our x's over, we have minus 10x plus 36. Okay, uh, let's try this one in green. So at 36, let's see, 4, 8, it's, what was this? It was just 20. 24, 28, 32, 36. I would put us right there. And a slope of negative 10. Okay, so for every 10 we go down, let's see, 2, 4, 8, 10. I have to go to the right one. 4, 8, 10. Go to the right one. Uh, 8, 10. Go to the right one. Uh, uh, let's see. Four, eight. So I'm not sure where this intersects, but it's somewhere like that. Okay. And we want the y values bigger than that. So we want this side of the line. So, so far we're looking at this area in here. Okay. And now we have one more. Uh, we have 5y bigger than negative 2x uh, plus 36. Okay. Um, so if we divide everything by 5, negative 2 fifths x uh, 30, just 36 fifths. What is 36 fifths? Um, we can't really reduce that. 7.2. I'm going to go ahead and write that as a decimal because 36 fifths is kind of a lousy fraction, right? All right, so if we go, we'll do this one in what purple. So if we go up 7.2, see if that's 8, 7.2 is around here. Okay, so this is lousy, right? Um, we need to figure out our slope. Our slope is down two to the right five, all right? That's the same as if I went down one, I'd have to go to the right two and a half, all right? But let's see, we have tick marks of four. So let's see, this is this two fifths. I multiply the top and the bottom by two. That's the same as four tenths, right? If I go down four, I have to go to the right 10. So down four, I have to go to the right, and where's 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If I go down 4, 
go to the right. Pin. There's that line. And we want the Y values bigger than that. That's up here. So what that gives us is this region in here. That's our region. All right. Now, this is what we're trying to optimize. We want to optimize Z. We want to make Z as big or small as possible, right? So uh, if we rewrite this and make it look like that, you can see whatever Z is, it's going to be our uh, Y intercept, right? I'll do this one in pink. Okay, so if I let Z be, what was it? Uh, this was 20. 20, let's say I let Z be uh, 24. The slope is minus three. All right, so for every three I go down, I have to go to the right one. For three I go down, I go to the right one. So that, that would look something like this, okay? That's if I let Z be um, 24, right? But no matter what I let Z be, that's just going to be the intercept here, right? Um, so if I change Z, if I make it bigger, this pink line, oh, pink line, if I change Z, it just goes, this line just goes up or down, right? But we need it to hit this guy right here. And so we could see that wherever Z is going to hit, it's going to be one of these corner points. Right, so we know it's always one of the corner points, and since we can't really like, I mean, we drew a graph as accurately as like we could, but we can't really look at it and go, I know what that point is, right? I don't know what that point is just by looking at the graph, okay? But I do know that it is where the purple line and the blue line intersect. It's where those lines intersect, right? And we know how to figure out where lines intersect, right? Y'all remember how to do that. Uh, so let's figure that out, figure out what that point is. All right, we, we really need to know where uh, all these points are. So I'm gonna call this point P1. I'll call this point P2. I'll call this point P3. Those, those are gonna be the points that minimize or maximize this thing. It's always a corner point. So let's go for P1 first. That's where the blue line and the purple line intersect. So if we take this, let's solve for P1. And I'll put it down here. P1 solve. Right. So we have this blue line, but we want this just to be equals because that's the line and the purple line. Right, so we change this to be purple. So here's our system of equations we need to solve for X and Y, because that's going to tell us what point P1 here is. Okay, so remember uh, process of elimination. If we simply subtract these from one another, we'll get a new equation that only has X in it. You see Y minus Y is zero. Right? Negative 2x minus a negative 2 fifths. So that's 2 plus 2 fifths, right? 2 plus 2 fifths. Well, 2 is 10 fifths, right? So that's really 12 fifths. So this guy minus that guy, that gives us 12 fifths x. And then we have 20 minus 7.2. And I'm going to use my calculator so I don't screw it up. Apparently, I'm bad at arithmetic. But 20 minus 7.2, 12.8. Okay. Uh, so that tells us that uh, 12 fifths x is equal to negative 12.8. Uh, 
this can't be right. This is going to give me a negative value for x. Obviously, x is positive over here. So I've already done something wrong in my arithmetic. Y minus y is 0. Oh, I see. This is 12. Oh, yeah. I have a negative 2 minus minus plus 2 fifths. 2 is 10 fifths. So negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8 fifths. That's what I should have right here. So if I move the 12x to the 12.8 12 to the other side, like this, and then I can multiply both sides by a minus. And that tells me if I multiply both sides by 5 eighths, right? I take 12.8. Multiply it by five and divide by eight, and I get eight. Y'all follow that step right there? Am I doing too many steps going from here to here? Oh, I, I can't add it in there. We want the x by itself, right? So we just multiply both sides by five eighths. Eights cancel, so five cancels. So I just took the 12.8, multiplied it by 5, divided by 8, and I got x equals 8. Now that I know what x is, I could put, put it up here to find y. So I'd be like y is equal to negative 2 times 8 plus 20. So that's 20 minus 16 is 4. So p1 is 8, 4. That's this point right here. This is eight four. And again, I figured that out by looking at the blue line and the purple line and seeing where they intersect by solving this uh, system of equations. So that's going to be a maximum or a minimum. So if I look at for p one, let's see what z is. If I replace the x with an eight and the y with a 4, uh, so I'll call this z1, because we're going to have different z's, right? So for z at point p1, uh, 3 times 8 is 24, plus 4 is 28, all right? So I don't know if that's a maximum or a minimum. I know it's one or the other, right? So what I have to do is I have to check the other three points, the other two points here. So let's find out what p2 is. Right, so P2, we're going to figure out what that point is. Uh, P2 is where the green and the blue intersect. So here's the green and the blue. And if we just treat these as lines, uh, we want equals here. We'll do the same thing if we subtract one equation from the other. Y minus Y is zero. Negative two plus 10 would be eight. And then 20 minus 36 is negative 16, right? And let's see that. That tells me that 8X is 16, or that X is equal to two. Now I know what two is, x is. I can plug it into either one of these to figure out what y is. I'll plug it into the first one here. So I got 20 minus 4 is 16. So p2 is 2, 16. Okay. This point right here is 2, 16. We could have maybe eyeball that, right? Here's 2. And each one of these is 4, 8, 12, 16. So that looks about right. right. We might have been able to eyeball that one from the graph, but it's good to check our work, right? So this is what we're trying to maximize. So for point two, the Z there is, let's see, we replace the X with two, replace the Y with 16. We got 16 plus six, which is 16, 22. All right, so obviously it's not a maximum because P1 produces a bigger value, right? 
maybe this is a minimum. Okay, let's check P3 here. What is P3? Well, I can't really figure it out by looking at the graph, but it is where the green and the purple intersect. So we need the green and the purple. Let's figure out where those uh, are intersecting. Okay. Is the green? I already have the green down there, don't I? Green and purple. So let me get some more space here. P3 solved. Uh, there's the purple. Here's the green one. And again, we're treating them like lines. Okay, we need to figure out where they intersect. So we'll do elimination again. If we just subtract y minus y is zero, we have negative 10 minus minus is plus two fifths. Uh, let's see, 10 is 50 fifths, right? So this would give us a negative 48 fifths. I got negative 48 fifths x. And now I have 36 minus 7.2. 36 minus 7.2. It gives us a 28.8. So neg negative 48 fifths x. If I move the 28.8 to the other side, all right, and move it over here. Now they're both negative. I'll just multiply. So if I multiply both sides by 5 over 48, I multiply 28.8 times 5 and then divide by 48, I get 3. So if x is 3, I replace the x with a 3. 36 minus 30 is 6. So point three here is three, six. So the value of Z at point three, we replace the X with a three and the Y with a six. We have nine plus six is 15. Okay. So we can see uh, point one is our maximum and point three is our minimum. Okay. Point two is neither. And you can imagine like this pink line again, it looks something like uh, something like this. And you can move it up or down. Okay. So you can see point the point two, the line that goes through that point actually goes through the whole region here, right? So there's a whole bunch of points in the region that would give the same uh, Z value as point two, right? Because this is our Z, right? We graphed it, right? So you, you wouldn't expect point two to give you a maximum or minimum because every single point on this pink line would give you the same Z value that you get at the point P2, right? Down here at P3, that's a unique point, right? Does it make sense? Kind of, right? This, this pink line is like constant Z, all right? Any point on that pink line is going to give you a Z value. So like P2 here, Z was 22. Well, every single point on that pink line inside our bounded region, they are, they're all going to give us a, a Z value of 22, OK? But P1 gave us 28, and P3 gave us a 15. And I'm going to move this. This is Z. All right, slope is minus 3. Z was our y intercept. All right, so that's how you do these. It's real tedious, right? Here's a generic picture that they gave us. All right, here was a region. And they were trying to maximize the profit. Uh, if you solve for y here, you would have 80y equals negative uh, 50x plus p, or y equals negative 5 8x plus p over 80. 
So if you change your p-value, you're just changing where this thing uh, is. And p was the profit, and then the slope is minus five eighths. So these were slopes of constant profit. And you can see that, well, down here where it touches, that's your optimal solution. That happened to be at 1488. That was our example uh, one from last time. So let's uh, see what the book has to say for us here. That was part A. <laughs> I, so I only gave you one problem on the quiz. Um, yeah, here's their region and they got the points there. Uh, I think we, we did it right, yeah. Graph the feasible region, then after checking the theorem, blah, 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 find the coordinates of each corner point. Uh, so this one is a bounded region, right? Let's look at another one here. Let's do um, B. Close this down. Let's do another one. Um, all right, so again, we're in quadrant one. So we can just go do 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 we have 2y greater than or equal to, we subtract 6x from both sides. And make some more room. So if we divide everything by 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 36 divided by 2 is 18. So there's our first line. All right, so the y, y intercept is at 18. So Let's see, we could make each tick mark worth three, right? So three, six, eight, 12, 15, 18. And then our slope is minus three. So every three we go down, we go to the right one. So each tick mark vertically is worth three. So I go down one tick mark, go to the right one. Down three, right one, down three, right one, down three, right one, down three, right one, down three, right one. So over here, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's our first line, and we want all the values above that. So we want to go in that direction. All right, that's good for one line. Let's look at the next one. If I subtract two x from both sides, I get this. Divide everything by four. Uh, minus two over four, that'd be a minus one half. And 32 divided by four is eight. We'll do this one in green. All right, so we have eight here. So each tick mark was worth three vertically. So that's three, six, eight. And our slope is minus one half. So every one I go down, I have to go to the right two. So down one, the right two. Down one, the right two. Uh, down one, wait, that's not right. No, 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 no. Each tick mark is worth three here. So let's see. Each tick mark is worth three. So if I multiply the top and the bottom by three, I got that, right? So if I go down three, I have to go to the right six, which is better because each tick mark vertically is worth three, right? If I go down one tick mark, which is going down three, I have to go to the right six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, something like that. And we want all the y values bigger than that. Uh, so, so far, so far our region is here. Okay. So I guess I really need to keep going with this. I don't know where it intersects over here. I'm sure it does somewhere. 
but we do need to know because that might be one of the corner corner spots. Let's look at this one here. Why less than 20? Okay, well, that's easy. I'll make this one purple. Why less than 20? So we go up 20. Uh, this is 18. So right here is 20. Uh, so there's where well, y is 20. We need everything less than that. So everything down here. So that means our region of interest is this region, but it's unbounded. It goes forever in this direction. Okay. So for an unbounded thing, uh, that means Z doesn't necessarily have a maximum, right? As I go this way, X gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So there is no end. There's no limit to the size of the X value in, in this region. X can be any number, right? Well, Z is this. That means I could plug infinity in for X, right? So Z is to be infinity. You can see it right there. So there is no, uh, no maximum, okay? Now, uh, they do want to find the minimum as well, though, right? So uh, we do have corner points we need to check out, right? We have, let's see, P1, P2, P3, and P4, right? So there's four points that we need to need to know. Uh, let's see if they have a picture of this one for us. Yeah, ours looks roughly like that, right? So let's uh, go ahead and solve it. So let's see, let's go with P1 first. That one's easy, right? It's going through the point. Uh, the X value there is zero and the Y value is 20. So let's see what Z is at point one. So uh, I'm gonna shrink this so I have room. So P1, our Z value, I replace X with zero and Y with 20. I get 20 times 20, two times two is four and there's two zeros. So that's for, uh, Point one. Uh, let's see, P4 is really easy. Uh, well, no, it's not, is it? Uh, we'd have to see where the green line uh, is zero. So let's go, I guess, in order here. We need to know P2 here. All right, P2 is the blue one, right? So let's just make some more room. We're going to uh, solve for P2. So the P2 is the blue line, okay? It's where, it's where the blue line and the y-intercept cross, right? Well, this line right here is the line x equals zero. That's what that vertical line is, isn't it? Right here, the y-axis is where x is zero. So we need to know where this guy, this is an equal and that guy where they intersect well if x is zero we already know what x is right so that means y seems like that is zero y has to be just 18. so p2 is simply 0 18. all right that's an easy one to find uh, p2 yeah yeah, we can see it right there. Oop, 18, right? We didn't have to do any math. We should have just been able to write that down. Does that make sense? Or we could just write that point down without having to solve the system. All right, we can see the y value is 18. We already labeled it. And obviously x is zero because we're on the y-axis. So we don't, we didn't have to solve. We just know it's zero, 18. Two, 
Let's see what uh, Z is there. Uh, 0, 18. So here's our Z value. So we replace X with a 0 and Y with 18. Uh, 2 times 18 is 36, and then we have a 0. So this would be 360. All right, so P2, right, we already know there's no maximum, but this tells us that P1 is not a minimum because P2 is smaller. Okay. P3 is going to require a little bit of work. It's where the green and the blue intersect. So let's solve, figure out what point P3 is. Green and blue. Here's our green, here's our blue. We want to know where these lines intersect. We'll treat these as lines. We'll do elimination since the y's are all together over here. Y minus y is zero. We have a minus three minus minus a half. Well, three is six halves. This is minus five halves. So right here we have minus five halves x. And then 18 minus eight is 10. So that tells us that minus five halves x is equal to negative 10. So x is 10 times two is 20 divided by five is four. So now we know what x is, we can figure out what our y is. x is four. So 18 minus 12 is six. So p point three is four six. Let's see what our z value is there. Four six. There's the z. So I replace x with four and y with six. So I got uh, this is 40, 6 times 2 is 12, which is 0. 40 and 120 is 160. So that, that could be the minimum, right? We still have one more point to check, though. Uh, P4. So this line right here is where the y value is 0, right? So we already know y is 0. So we just need to plug in into the green line zero for y, right? So the point four, we have this line and this line, right? That's what we need to solve. Well, if y is zero, I just replace y with zero. I'd right? have zero equals negative one half x plus eight. So subtract eight from both sides. And then multiply both sides by two. So X is 16. So we have 16, zero. So let's, let's see what our Z value is for 16, zero. P4. Replace X with 16. Replace Y with zero. And we have 10 times 16, which is 160. So P3 and P4 are both minimums. They have the same value. All right. So uh, this point and this point uh, both gave us a minimum. What that tells us, though, because you think about it, if, if we took our Z here and, and let's graph that Z, all right, there's something interesting going on here. We have 20y equals negative 10x plus z. So y would be 10 divided by 20 is a half. And then we have z over 20, OK? All right, that guy right there, if we graphed it, it depends on what we plug in for z, right? And then the slope is minus one half. Well, look at this green line here. This green also has a slope of minus one half. What we're looking at is, and it, this is our Z, okay? Depend, depending on what we change our Z to, 
uh, the, this is a line of constant z value. Okay. Don't make that too big. So it turns out that our constant z value has the same. Uh, has the same slope as the green line. Okay. So you could see this and this both gave us a minimum, right? At 160. Well, those two points are on the same line. That means that every single point in between them is going to give us the same z value of 160. So this one, since these two corner points had the same, they're both 160. All right. And this green line, they both lie on the green line. The green line at a slope of minus one half, but the line that tells us our constant uh, z's. Uh, has the same slope. So any point between those two points is going to give us the same minimum there. All right. So it's not just one answer. Usually, a lot of problems, there's like one place where it's the minimum, one place where it's the maximum, right? Well, in this case, we have all of these values right here. All of these are going to give us a minimum of 160. There is no maximum, but there's an infinite number of solutions for the minimum, that line segment. Okay. Um, all is minimum of 160. All right. These are challenging problems, aren't they? Yeah, there's a lot of work to do. But here's a circumstance that can happen. So we need to be aware of that. Do, 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 do. Uh, Is this our figure six? Is this the one for our problem? Now here, yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, this is our picture here. So from four six to sixteen zero, every point along there. The minimum value of z is at four six to sixteen ten. The solution is a multiple optimal solution. In general, if two corner points are both optimal solutions, then any point on the line segment joining them is also an optimal solution. So put that in our notes here. That's important to know. Yeah. All right. Uh, Y'all want to take a break? Break time. Let's take a, a five or six minute break here. Uh, we'll come back at 4.10. Uh, match problem. Uh, do we want to do more of these? We <laughs> want to move on. Y'all got the idea? Can y'all do these on your own now? Maybe you want to do another one. We can do another one. It will be on the final. We need to know how to do this. We'll do, we'll do one more. It's so pretty outside, right? I'd rather be at the zoo. So we'll do part A. All right, they want, it's a different Z, but same constraint from example 2a. So there's 2a. That was a quiz. I think the quiz was 2a, wasn't it? Find out. Two a, yeah, that was from a quiz. So we can just go. Here. It's the same problem we did before. But it's a different Z value. 
and the way I can handle that. Uh, give it this. Uh, give it this for now. So instead of this guy, do, 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 do. we have a different Z value. Uh, Z equals 4X plus 2Y. All right, so different Z value, all of our work here is still fine, right? All it's changing, see this Z has a different slope, right? If we solve for Y here, we would have 2Y equals negative 4X, uh, uh, maybe I should have left this one. Uh, negative 4X plus Z, so y is negative 2x plus z over 2. See our old one here, should have left this. y was negative 3x plus z. All right, so for our z, our old one had a slope of minus 3. This one has a slope of minus 2, OK? And the y-intercept depends on what z is. So instead of this guy at a slope of minus three, this has a slope that's a little less. But the uh, the minimums and maximums are going to be in the same places. So all we have to do here is plug in our point for our our new z value. We're using this guy instead. So for this one. Uh, that's the if we replace x with uh, eight and y with four, the eight times four is thirty-two plus four is thirty-six. And now for point two, if we replace the x with a two and the y with sixteen, the eight and sixteen is twenty-four. And our point three, we we'll replace the x. What was our P3 here? Oh, uh, no. Let's find our point three. What was our point three? Three, six. Point three, six. So we replace our X with three. And a y with six, we get twelve plus six is eighteen. So we can see um, p three is our minimum, and p one is our maximum. So maximum here, and our minimum there. And we can see that this is neither because if we graphed our constant z's, right, we would have something like this. If we moved it down, change our z value, there'd be a whole bunch of points that have the same value is p2 and not none of them they're all going these would all give you 36 here which isn't no wait a minute, not 24 and 24 is not a minimum or a maximum so that wasn't too bad all we had to do was change our z so we just had to plug in our points and see which one was the minimum and the maximum so we still got the same points for the same minimum and maximum. We just had different values. So it's not too bad. That's all they want us to do. We can do that. There's match problem two um, A. See the match problem two B. We can recycle our work here. Two, 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 uh, So change our restraint in problem 2B. Okay. There's our 2B then. Uh, quiz, that was 2A. Here was our 2B. Let's just select this page. Copy the page. And 
paste the page. And instead of this Z, uh, do, 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 do. we want this new one here. Let's put it down here. Oop. There's our new Z value. So on this one, we had that the constant Z had a slope of minus a half, which is the same as the green line. This is the one where we had a whole bunch of solutions, right? But this guy is going to be a little different because if we solve for our Y here, we would have 5Y equals negative 20X plus Z or Y equals 20 divided by 5 is 4. And we have Z over 5. Okay, so you can see this guy has a slope of minus 4. That's not the same as the slope as the one we had last time. It's not the same as the slope of any of our lines, right? So a slope of minus 4, let's get rid of all this now. Delete. 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 Okay, so we don't know if these are going to be minimums or maximums anymore. We need to we need to recheck our z. So we know what our points p are. So let's see, we have this new what is it? A twenty x plus five y. So we'd have twenty. What's our x? For point one is zero. Twenty x plus five y. Y here is twenty. So five times twenty is a hundred. Uh, point two was eighteen zero. So we have twenty uh, times zero plus five times eighteen. I don't know what five times eighteen is. Uh, five times eighteen is ninety. Point three. What the hell? Where's, where's point three? Did I not write it down? I have to go find it. Do, 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 do. Point three is four six. Four six. So we replace our x with four, and our y with six. Twenty times four is eighty. Five times six is thirty. So this gives us a hundred and ten. And I'll point four here. I didn't write that one down either. The X, we don't know what the X is. What is point four? 16, zero. 16, zero. So we replace the X with a 16, the Y with a zero, and 20 times 16. Two times 16 is 32. And then we have another zero, so 320. So this dude could give us a max, right? But no, we already know there is no maximum, right? In this red zone here, our bounded area, X can be as big as we want it to be. So for this, if X could be as big as we want it to be, make it infinity, that means Z is infinity, right? So this is not a max, There's, there is no max, right? But, we do have a minimum, right? So P1 and P3, neither one of those give us a minimum. They're just values, right? But P2 here, that's our minimum, okay? You can see P4 is, is it's the farthest point to the right. Okay, P4 is a far, it has the biggest X value. And again, if you make X big, it's gonna make that big, but it's, it's not a max, there's no maximum. So that wasn't too bad. They just wanted us to recycle our work and kind of analyze it. Explore and discuss, I don't want to. Uh, oh, here's an example where and there's no minimum or maximum. So let's look at this a little bit and think about it. 
They want us to maximize P. Uh, but our regions here is this and that, but they don't overlap, right? So when you graph these, there's no place that overlaps all of them. So there is no region. So there can be no minimum or maximum. There's nothing. Right, the, right here, that's the empty set, right? If this is one line and this is the other line, right? There's nothing that's over here and in there at the same time. So no region. So there's no min, no max. Min, no max. All right, let's try an application here. Instead of them just giving us the equations, we have to figure out what the equations are. Hospital patient is required to have at least 84 units of drug A and 120 units of drug B. So let's see, we have A and B. And let's say, here's our requirements. No, that was, that's not going to work. Right. We need A. B maybe. How would no? Let's do it like this. A B requirements. We need eighty four units of A and one hundred and twenty of B. Each gram of substance M. Uh, okay, M <laughs> and N. See, I didn't know if I want to do N, N, or A, B like that. We might have to change this. Um, each gram of substance N, M, contains 10 units of A and 8 units of B. And substance N has 2 units of A and 4 units of B. Suppose M and N contain an undesirable drug, D, Okay, all right. Three units in M and one in N. How many grams of each substance is M and N should be mixed to meet the minimum daily requirements and simultaneously minimize the intake of drug D? All right. So we want to minimize drug D, right? So drug D, we have three grams for M and one for N, right? One gram times the number of units. So these are in units. So that's what D is, you're undesirable. Uh, so that's what we want to minimize, right? So that's that would, this D is our old Z, okay? So let's see here, we have, um, uh, what are our variables, A or B? How many grams of each substance, M and N? So M and N are our variables, there, there are X and Y, okay? Uh, uh, so let's see, we have, Oh, here's our requirements. So we're going to use this and this to make our two equations. So for A, we have 10 uh, grams times uh, M units, and then 2 grams times N units has to be less than 84. Is it less than or greater than? Okay. Each gram contains, or is required to have at least, okay, so this should be greater than or equal. And then, yeah, so it's at least. So now let's look at this. So we have eight grams of B, unit B, 
So eight grams of drug B. What do I call it? Yeah, and M. And then four times N has to be at least 120. So this is about A, and this one is about B, drug A and drug B. And M are substances. Right? So you can see how easily that could get totally confused, right? We have M's, M's, A's, B's, B's, and R's. Right. So just picking out the variables, right? Uh, in the book, they use X and Y. We could call these X and Y if you want. We could say X is uh, drug M, grams of M. And Y is grams of N, if you wanted to use X and Y. We could do that. So we could call this X. We could call that Y. These are X's. These are Y's. The X and Y. Those are the same thing. Uh, so that's how we're defining our uh, units. So we, we just need to graph these and maximize that. Um, let's see. So for the first one here, let's. Uh, I'll put this guy, we'll do our work down here, the graph. We have 2y greater than or equal to, we'll move our x's over. And now we'll divide everything by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 84 divided by 2 is 42. So we could just draw a rough picture. Let's just draw something real rough here. Doesn't have, doesn't have to be perfect. So we have 42. Oops. And a slope of minus five, so more like this. So that's what that one looks like. And we want everything bigger than that. So we want everything on that side. Now for our other equations, so this one's our blue. Oops. We'll make this one green. All right, so let's get our y by itself. We will move the 8x over. Now we'll divide everything by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Uh, 120 divided by 4. Well, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Oh, there we go. This is our green one. So it has an intercept of 30, so it's like here and a slope of minus two. So that's kind of more like this, okay? And we want everything like that. So here is our area of interest over here. And this point right here, and this point and this point are our three corner points. So those are the ones we need to check. We'll call them point one, Point one is easy. Point one is at 0, 042. Yep. 0, 042. So that's point one. Make it blue. Uh, point two here uh, is where the two lines intersect. Okay, so define what point two is. All right, here's our two lines. We just need to find where they intersect. So treat these as lines now. Do, 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 do. We'll do the uh, elimination. Y minus Y is zero. Minus five plus two is minus three. Minus five plus two, yeah. 42 minus 30 is 12. So that means uh, X divide, but subtract 12 divide by three, 12 divided by three is four. So now I know what X is, plug it in to figure out what Y is. I got 42 minus 20 is 22. So P2 here is four, 22. 
And now we need to know what P3 here is. P3 is where the green line crosses the uh, x axis, right? The, the x axis is where y equals zero. So where the green line is our green line. So where the green line crosses y equals zero. So if y is zero, you can see that x is 120 divided by eight. And I don't know what that is. Uh, 120 divided by eight, 15. So P3 here is 15, zero. So we got our three corner points, all right? There is no maximum, but that's okay. We want to minimize we want to minimize the undesirable drug, 3x plus y. Okay, so let's figure out what our min minimums are. So for the first one, we would have, what is it, 3x plus y. So for P1, we have 3x plus y, 42 grams of the undesirable drug there. For the second point, 422, replace X with four and Y with 22. 22 and 12 would be 34, so that's better. And now we have P3, replace X with 15 and Y with zero. Three times 15 is 45. So D2 here is our minimum. Gives us our minimum. Okay. And that's kind of easy to see. We should have known that's what it was because here's D, right? If we uh, rewrite that, Y would be negative uh, 3X plus D, right? So D is our Y intercept and it has a slope of minus three. So the slope of minus three is what it was, something like that, right? And you move it up and down, these are constant D values, right? You can see that it's going to be that point right there, that P2. It can't be P1 and it can't be P3, obviously. Because if you have a line like that, right, it has to be just touching our boundary. So that's the one that it would obviously have to be. So we shouldn't really have to check P1 or P3 by intuition. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, Hopefully this is the last one. Chicken farmer. Can buy a special food mix A at 20 cents per pound. Okay, so we have A at 20 cents per pound. Okay, and a special food mix A at 20 cents per pound, and B at 40 cents per pound. Each pound of mix A contains 3,000 units of nutrient in. Okay, let's see. This is the cost. Uh, okay, we'll do like N1 here. So mix A contains 3,000 units of N1. And 1,000 units of N2. Each pound of mix B uh, contains 4,000 units of N1 and 4,000 units of N2. If the minimum daily requirements are collectively 36,000 units of N1, 36,000 of N1, 
and 20,000 units of N2, how many pounds of each food mix should be used a, a day? So each food mix, the A and B are the food mixes. So let's call A our X and B our Y. Okay? And we need to find out pounds. All right, so these were pounds. All right, this is 20 cents per pound. This is 3,000 grams or units of that per pound. So everything here is per pound. Um, we want to minimize the cost. So here's our cost function. Well, our cost function is 20 cents times uh, pounds of A plus 40 cents times pounds of B. But wait, our A, we called it X, and our B, we called it Y. Okay. Stick with X's and Y's. So that, that's what we want to minimize. All right, that's our objective function, I think we call it. All right. So once we, uh, we have to get our equations out of here, though. So let's see, for N1, we have 3,000 times pounds of A and 4,000 times pounds of B. So that's what we get about the information from N1. The information from N2, we have 1,000 units per pound of mix A and 4,000 units per pound of mix B. So that's what we get from here. And these need to be, what is it, less than or greater than? Uh, each pound, blah, blah, blah. Collect the minimum requirements. Okay, so these need to be at least 36,000 and at least 20,000. Okay, so we can do a, a rough graph, right, just to, to visualize it. So for N1, let's see, I have, uh, I could divide everything by 1,000, right? So what we're really looking at here is X plus Y bigger than 36 and X Oh, it's a three, three X plus four Y, sorry. Yeah. Right, so I just divided everything by a thousand. Three X plus four Y between 36. And now for N2, it's X plus four Y is bigger than. Twenty, there we go. So those are the same as this. All right, so the first one, let's get our y by itself. We would have 4y bigger than or equal to negative 3x plus 36, or y is bigger than or equal to negative 3 fourths x, and then whatever 36 divided by 4 is. Uh, 36 divided by 4 is 9. There you go. So if we graph this dude, do, 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 do. we're obviously in quadrant 1. We're not going to talk about negative units of whatever we're talking about, chicken eggs or something, right? We don't have negative chickens. So somewhere up here at 9, and then we have a slope of minus 3 fourths. So let's see, this would be a slope of minus one. So it's not quite that slopey. So it looks something like that. And we want everything bigger than that. So we want that side. So that's from N1. Our N2 here is this guy. That's the information from N2. Uh, let's get our Y by itself. We'd have four Y bigger than or equal to negative X plus 20 dividing by four, 20 divided by four is five. So we'll do this one in green. So our, our y-intercept is at five, which is somewhere around here. Slope of one fourth, that's for every one I go down, I have to go four to the right. So this guy is 
a whole lot like that. And we want everything bigger. So clearly this is our region here. Here's our four point or three points, right? Well, one, two, and wherever this guy crosses. Okay. And I know these things are going to cross like this. Uh, so let's let's check and see what our points are here. So there's our P1, our P2, and our P3. My intuition says it's going to have uh, the minimum is going to happen at P2 here. So P1 is obviously at 0, 9. P3, that's where the green intersects, right? For P3, we know that the Y value is 0, right? At P3, the Y value is obviously 0, and it's on the green line. So if we make this 0, right, we'd have 0 equals the negative 1 fourth X plus 5. So one fourth x would be five, so x is equal to 20. So this is 20, zero. So we got that point. All right? Does that make sense? Right here, we know the y value is zero and it's on the green line, so we just replace the y with zero. So this is solved for P3. And now we just need P2. That's the interesting one. So it's where these two lines intersect. So let's figure out where they intersect. Solve P2. Here's our two lines. We do elimination. Y minus Y is zero. Now we have a negative three fourths minus a negative one fourth. So that's uh, negative two fourths. Negative two fourths is the same as negative half. We have nine minus five is four. That tells us that one half X is equal to four, so that X is eight. Now we know what X is, we we'll put it right there. We have negative three fourths times eight plus nine. Eight over four is two, times three is six. This gives us a three. So P2 is eight, three. Here, eight, three. So here is our cost function. Let's check out what our points are. So at point one, we have 20 times zero plus 40 times nine. That's nine times four, 36. So that's 360. And at point two, we have 20 times eight plus 40 times three. It's 160 plus 120, which is 280. And then at point three over here, we have 20, 20 times our X. 40 times our y, 20 times 20 is 400. Zero, zero. So this one actually is, you know, big. So it can't be that one. We want to minimize the cost, All right? We, we know that that's not going to be a minimum cost because the bigger x is, the bigger the cost is. And this x is way over there to the right. And there's no bound. There's no limit to the cost, right? All right our region here has no bound. So our minimum cost is going to be right here. It's in, and since cost is in cents, this is two dollars and eighty cents uh, per pound. I guess is what they're talking about here. And the two eighty. So it's the one where we thought it would be. That's where our minimum is at. Uh, the the daily cost. There we go. So we figured out the minimum. How many pounds of each food mix should be used, right? It is eight pounds of whatever A was, and then three pounds of whatever B is. I think we call them A and B, yeah. And the minimum daily cost, 
according to our cost function is $2.80. Construct a mathematical model installed using the geometric method. I guess that's where you just draw the graph and look at it, but we're better than that. Okay. And that's it for that problem. Conceptual insight. Blah, blah, blah. Finally, we're done with 5.3. Touchdown dash. Na, 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 na. So let's see here. Boom. That should get your My Math Lab 5.3 done. All right. Uh, next time, well, let's see. Let's, for the other classes, this is when they're doing their exam, big exam one. I gave you all a practice exam, right? Uh, on My Math Lab. I made a practice exam just for y'all to practice because the final exam will be in my math lab and timed and stuff. So I want to have y'all you know, to have practice doing that. Um, so this is what we're supposed to do next week. So Thursday would be an exam, but we do our daily exam. So Thursday, what we can do is work some problems from the practice exam instead, okay? And then next week we will start doing this. And there is homework for this, uh, but the, the section in the book, I, I think it's like an appendix section, right? So we'll, we'll work on that from the appendix out of the, the textbook next week. So that'll be it for today. So do your 5.3, my math lab, right? Uh, wait, wrong one. Do my math lab 5.3 homework okay so now we need an exam uh, daily exam number nine uh, i don't want to give you any of programs for an exam it's got Really long, tedious. Uh, let's pick one out of the exercises here. Draft the constant profit line. I don't want to grade that either. Minimize and maximize. All right, I'll give you one one of these. Let's do one problem for this one. So there's only one problem instead of two. One of these linear programming ones. Okay. So there's your exam for the day. Uh, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. All right. Uh, well, you should be able to get this done in about 15, 20 minutes, hopefully, and then have a decent evening. And if you're uncertain, I'm going to work this now. So if, if you don't want to leave, you can watch me working. <laughs> All right. If you have trouble with this stuff, I work the exams after class every day. So you're always welcome. If you need more help or tutoring or help with the exam, and usually I get them right. <laughs> so that's it for today. And uh, we'll get out 15 minutes early, huh? Now let's see, how would I do this? Um, the first one. Good. Actually, hold on. I need to save this. Um, okay. uh, this one, we get our y by itself. We have minus 4x plus 24. So therefore, y is bigger than minus 4 thirds x plus 7. Oh, yeah. So y'all are welcome to leave if y'all want classes over.
Okay. You can go as far up here as you want. You can take Z as big as you want. But we want a minimum. So P2, right, gives us our minimum here. Boom. Our P2 is our minimum. Here. Minimum at, what is it, 6, 0. So this guy turned out to be our minimum. Kind of makes sense because when we were, not that one. Uh, this guy, when we put it in line form, when we graphed it, it was, some, it was something like that that could go up or down. So, like, if we hit it right there, it's like, boom, that's a unique point, right? But over here, well, I don't know about this because this pink line goes through our unbounded uh, region, right? This pink line has a slope of minus eight, seven. So the minimum we're getting right there, we should get the same minimum values along that line everywhere throughout our region. Okay. Does that make sense? Like if we graph this for a particular value of Z, the slope is I forgot my X. Oops. The slope is a little bit bigger than minus one. So it's something like that. And those are the lines. These lines give us constant Z values. This is a line of constant Z. I pick a value for Z and then I graph it. So if it's going through that point, this line is going through our whole unbounded region. It's our region of acceptable points. So every single point on that line is going to also give us the same minimum of 48. Does that make sense? So this one's a little different than any of them we've done before. So I would say minimum at that point. Uh, so at 48, that's our Z value, right? So if we replace, you'd have to say minimum there. And on the line, replace Z with 48. Okay. So this line is going to look like something like this. Boop. And then up here, all right, if X is zero, whatever this number is, what's 48 divided by seven? 48 divided by seven is six point something. Well, that's wrong. All right, that makes sense. So for Z value of 48, this is 6.8 approximately. Well, 6.8 is down here. So that's actually our, uh, our constant Z, in, in which case, this is not inside of our, our region. This is our region up here. So then if that's what our line looks like, then it is only that point. It's only on that point, All right? I was thinking that our line looked like this, in which case it would go through our bounded region, but no, it looks like this. And so the only place this line touches our bounded region is right here. This is our minimum. Got it? All right. So that's your exam. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody.